All right, welcome back to Adobe Photoshop. Today, we're gonna to take a look at the saving process in multiple different ways. First, I'm gonna show you how to save a true black and white. Second, how to save for the web. Third, how to save for print. And most important, how to save for yourself. All right, so let's get started. So the first thing you need to do is actually tone your image. Now, once you've toned your image, the very first thing you should always do before you size and before you crop is to save it for yourself. And the reason for this is, and the reason is because down the road, you don't know how that output could change. So we want our full resolution, full image. So my first step is to go up here, do file, save as that's command shift s all right so here's our image up here and we're going to output this as just a psd file i just normally use the file name here what i'm looking at is this psd that we have up here this identifies to me that i've toned it but i haven't done anything else because we only save psd files this way down here we're going to keep support for our layers and you can see the embedded color profile which is important and we'll just go ahead and hit save. And that's great. We haven't done anything to it. If we ever need to go back to the original image, change a crop, change a ratio, change an image size, we have it. It's really easy to get done. So that means the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and output for the web. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to output for black and white. And this is gonna be a true black and white image. So in this image, you'll notice over here, we've done a black and white conversion, but this is still an RGB image. So to actually change it to black and white, you're gonna to go to image, mode, grayscale. And it's gonna ask you if you wanna flatten this image, which means compress everything into one layer. I'm gonna just put okay, cause I don't wanna do it, but it is going to discard the color layer or the color conversion layer, which is right there. And all we're gonna have left is the basic curves that we did to it, which is fine with me. So because this is gonna be an outputted format, we, we really don't need layers. So it's not gonna make much of a difference. We'll just leave it like that. So the next step you need to decide is, where is it going? Is it going for the web or is it going to go for print? In this case, we'll just go ahead and say that we're gonna output this for the web. So we'll go up here to image, go down to image size. And whenever you size for the web or social media, you always do it in pixels. If somebody tells you to do it in inches, that is incorrect, it's always pixels. So let's go ahead and say we're gonna output this at 1500 pixels on that long edge. That's gonna make the width 1000 pixels and we're gonna go ahead and hit okay. You can see that image is now considerably smaller than it was before, that's okay. We'll go ahead and increase this size to 100%. The next step is to sharpen your image. Now, when you sharpen your image, you need to go over here to the layer panels and you will notice we have two layers. You must be on the image layer to sharpen it. So we're gonna go ahead and go to filter, sharpen, and I like unsharp mask. I can slide this over here so you can see what I'm doing. The sharpening amount for an image depends on the image size. So what I'm gonna do after I'm done doing this, I'm gonna go ahead and upload a little sheet that I made for using Unsharp Mask and that has the basic amounts of what I use per size of the image. And you can go ahead and do a screenshot of that if you'd like. So for this one, because it's really small, we're gonna do the amount of 20. We, I always do the radius of pixels. So what happens in sharpening is it makes the pixel on this side, cause it's brighter, whiter, and it makes this one darker, all right? But we only want that one pixel this way, one pixel this way. Threshold determines how much contrast difference between an area for it to get sharpened. So in an instance where we have skin tone, we don't wanna sharpen the skin tone. So we want to only sharpen where there's a strong contrast difference. The higher the number, the higher the contrast difference 
for the item to be sharpened. So with three, the skin tones are gonna be sharpened and they're already like this, and this might get sharpened on this edge, this might get sharpened on this edge, and so on. So we're gonna go ahead and hit okay, and that's gonna give us our unsharp mask. You always view this at 100% so you can see actually what it looks like. All right, so if you are in Photoshop and you go to edit, down to color settings, you can check to make sure that your color settings are set up. So in my case, I have Adobe set at Adobe 98, and I have my gray gamma, which my image is in now, at 2.2. And I have it set up so I can convert these files. And you can feel free to copy this if you'd like to copy it, but we're just gonna go ahead and hit okay. So my working profile for this image, because it's in black and white, is gray gamma 2.2, which is what I want it in. So if you wanna check to see if your image is in the right color space, you'll go up here to edit, down to convert to profile, and you can see mine right here is in gray gamma 2.2. And if I wanted to convert it to a different workspace, I could come down here and change that. So if I wanted to go to sRGB, I could easily change that. I'm just gonna hit cancel because I don't wanna do that. All right, so we've got our image ready. It's ready now to output. So we can come out here and go to file, and they've changed this. You wanna to go to save as a copy if you're gonna save as a JPEG. You can use save as, but you have to go into the preferences and click the legacy options. But we're just gonna go ahead and go to save as a copy, and it's gonna bring up this new file. Now, what I would normally do, I'm just gonna get rid of this one and this four because we don't really need that, is I'm going to always put at the end a dash and then the size I have this at. So 1500 pixels is because it's on the long edge, I'm gonna hit the letter P for pixels. So this lets me know that I have saved this image at 1500 pixels on the long edge. I'm gonna come down here. We're gonna change this to JPEG. You can see my color profile was embedded right there. That's exactly what we want. We're gonna go ahead and hit save. I'm gonna make this the best quality. Always use baseline standard and hit okay. And you're done. This image is now been saved and ready for the web. What do we wanna do if we wanna save this as an RGB file for the web? Well, the process is different. So we need to redo this. And this is normal for just about every saving process, you have to start over. So do I usually go through this long arduous process? No, you'll notice up here I have actions to save. So all I have to do is one click and it does everything for me. We'll get to that in a little bit. So the next step is I'm gonna go back to where I started changing stuff. So right here in my history says grayscale. I wanna go above that. So we're gonna go ahead and click that. I'm gonna hit command zero to make it big. And now we're back to our original sized image. So this one, we're gonna save as an RGB black and white for the web. Process is basically the same, but some of the settings might be different. So now we're gonna go up here to image. We're gonna to go to image size, and this works the same for a color image, so there's no difference. So we'll go to image size. We're gonna change our image size. This time, let's do it at 2000 pixels. Remember that height because we're using a portrait style. If it was landscape, we would use width. We're going to zoom in, make our image 100%. I can always tell my image is 100% right up there. We're going to go in here and we are going to sharpen this image. So we need to make sure that we are on the image layer to sharpen. And we're going to go up here to filter, sharpen, unsharp mask. We'll add a little bit more because this is larger. So I'm going to change this to 25 because it's a larger size image. I'm going to hit OK. We're going to go up here to edit down to color profile. Now, when you save for the web color, it always must be in sRGB that we see right here. So we're gonna go from Adobe down to sRGB. So we'll hit okay, you'll see absolutely no difference. And then once again, you'll go file, save as. Now I'm saving these in a folder. Usually I will save something called finish or toned or anything you wanna call it all my files that have been saved and processed just so I have one simple location. But you don't have to because I'm identifying what I'm doing in these. So once again, I'm gonna come up to here. In this one, I'm gonna write 2000 or 2000 pixels. We'll change this to a JPEG, save, save. And we're done with our color RGB. 
So we can go back up here. It's modified, command zero. I think I have something for 2000 pixels right there. You can see here's 2000 pixels saved. Boom, done, that's an action. Did the same thing a lot quicker, right? This is where we wanna get, but I wanna show you the process so you understand what's going on. In this instance, we're gonna save for print. So we're gonna size this to be printed and this is much different. Same things that we're gonna be using the same items, we're just gonna configure it differently. So we're gonna go up to image, down to image size. And this time we're gonna change it from pixels to inches, all right? When you are sizing an image, if you want it to be a specific ratio, You'll notice, let's say we want this to be five by seven because this is not a five by seven ratio. So if I type in seven, you'll notice it's only 4.67 because this ratio is not the same. Now you could unlink this. You can un unlink the image and then come in here and type seven and type five, but all that's gonna do is squish your image. So it's, see how it's stretched out and squish it, it looks weird. That's not the way to do it. If you wanna change your image ratio, you're better off by coming up here to the cropped and picking the ratio that you want. So if I wanted five by seven, I can change this to five by seven. That's gonna be my new ratio. I'm gonna go ahead and apply that ratio change. And then I'm gonna come up here and go to image, image size. And yes, there is a different way to do this, but we're gonna do it this way. So after I turn the box on, that should always be on. I'm gonna make this seven. You'll notice that that's automatically gonna be five because we've already configured the ratio. What we do need to change is now we're gonna use resolution. Before, resolution was not affecting our image at all. We were just pixels is a fixed dimension. Resolution has nothing to do with it. When you print, resolution does matter. Basically, the higher the number, the better the quality. However, printers max themselves out at some image quality. So an Epson printer, you might just go ahead and use a resolution of 300. A lab might use 260. Another lab might use 355. It just depends, you need to find that out. In our case, we're gonna always use 300. So we're gonna do five right here, then seven, then 300. And we're gonna hit okay. And that's going to resize our image. When you do ratio, it just changes the ratio. It doesn't actually resize your image. Then we're gonna come in and we're gonna do that unsharp mask. So I'm gonna click on the subject because you need to be on the image layer and go to filter, sharpen, unsharp mask. And because the image is a little bit larger, it's like 2,100 pixels, I'm actually not gonna uh, change the image size because that's pretty good for that size of an image. I'm gonna go ahead and apply that sharpening. And then we're going to output. Now, depending on the lab or the place where you're gonna print it, the color profiles might be different. Some might be use sRGB and some might use Adobe RGB. I'm gonna use Adobe RGB just to check to make sure it's there. I can either go into here and it says, yes, I'm in Adobe. I'm gonna hit no, cause I don't need to convert it. Or when you go to file, save as a copy, you'll notice down here, it tells you what the embedded color profile is, which is Adobe, which we want. So in this case, I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna do this a little bit different. I usually put five by seven. So I know what size I save the image. And because this is for print, I could either do this as a JPEG or a TIFF, but just so we have something different, I'll go ahead and save this as a TIFF file. And we'll go ahead and hit save. We've got all this information here. I want this for Macintosh. We're gonna go ahead and hit okay. And we're gone. That's how you save for print in Adobe Photoshop. So the last step here are actions. And, and actions basically run through a series of steps. So if you wanna find out how I created these actions, I will link that video below in the description. So if you found this video helpful, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, you can always leave those below and don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>